What was the freakiest thing you were doing and got caught in the act? Being caught in the act can be pretty embarrassing. But Reddit Stories is a safe place to find hundreds of people just like you that can laugh about yours and other stories similar to yours. Number one, not a parent but a forever scarred child. I think I was like 10 when this happened. I had recently discovered the wonderful world of picking locks with bobby pins and walked around the house, checking for locked doors I could pick. I found a door that was locked and it was my parents' bedroom door. I proceeded to pick it and saw my dad's naked ass sticking up in the air, and that's about it before my mom like yelped when she realized the door was open. I quickly shut the door and ran to my room two floors down. I stopped picking bedroom door locks after that, number two. My wife and I, during one of our rare populations, were doing it on the couch. I had like a 30-second orgasm that was loud and proud. The stairs to our house have a landing where you look around the wall and see the whole living room. After my unusually and exceedingly long orgasm, I hear my six-year-old's voice emanating from the stairs asking Daddy, Why are you laying on Mommy going? Oh, 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 I, um, stubbed my toe and it hurt so much I fell over on Mommy. Go to bed. And he did. I'm pretty sure he'll put it together when he's old enough. Number three. Back in the time people recorded TV shows on VHS tapes. My uncle brought us a documentary about wild animals in Africa. It was a Sunday night and the whole family gathered. Me, 10 years old, my sister, 5 years old, my parents and my grandparents, i.e. my uncle's parents were sitting on the couch to see it. Let's just say that what we saw was wild. Very wild. As soon as he realized that it was his porn tape, he desperately tried to shut it down, pressing all the buttons on the remote. Having failed... He stood up and pressed our old TV buttons, failing to change the channel and increasing the sound in the process. So I was laughing. My sister wasn't understanding anything. My grandma was covering her eyes. Grandpa was paralyzed in shock. Mom and Dad also trying to help my poor uncle. In the end, someone managed to eject the tape. It all happened in like five seconds. But I'm sure for my uncle it lasted a lot more than that. Number four. Not actually bad. But my wife had wanted to rearrange our bedroom closet for a long time, but just couldn't find the time with our, at the time, two-year-old son, constantly underfoot. She was out of the house one afternoon, so I decided to surprise her by taking all the clothes out and putting them back the way she wanted. My son was watching and saw me drape her many skirts and dresses over my arms and shoulders so I could move them out efficiently. My wife came home, and when she asked him what we'd been up to, he casually said, Papa was wearing your clothes. My wife shot me a weird glance, and I gave her that, I'll explain later, hand gesture that's part of the nonverbal communication every couple develops after many years together. I'm over a foot taller than her and close to 2.5 times her weight, so I'm sure the mental image that flashed in her head was very confusing. And by confusing, I mean traumatizing. Number five, I was changing my daughter when she was a toddler who was about 14 months old, and the little monkey was wriggling around trying to escape. She almost fell off the changing table, and I said, shit, there was a few seconds of silence, which was broken by her little voice saying shit perfectly. Uh-oh. I was sure that she'd start saying that all of the time, because I laughed when she said it. She didn't say it again, though. Changing that kid's nappy was like trying to put clothes on a cat. Luckily, toddlers don't have claws, and she wasn't a biter. Number six, my five-year-old, who was supposed to be sleeping, decided to barge into our room while I was on top of my significant other. I was already yelling, no, 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 while the door was opening, so he only got a glimpse while turning around to shut the door. I threw some clothes on and followed him out to tuck him back into bed. He asked me what I was doing on top of Dad. So me, being my quick-thinking self, told my son that I was cracking Dad's back. My son says, oh, like Dr. Kevin, my chiropractor. I said exactly like that. Number seven, not been caught doing anything sus by my kids as far as I know. But when I was a kid, probably six or seven, I opened the door to my parents' room to see dad plowing mom doggy style. They both immediately in one graceful movement separated and got back under the covers. I didn't really understand or care what I saw. I was just a kid with no compression that I wasn't meant to see it, or that I should be horrified. I just had something that I needed to tell them. It wasn't until many years later that I clicked and realized what I saw. Number eight, I'm not a parent, but... When I was 15, I caught my parents snorting coke with their friend in my little brother's room. They told me it was powdered sugar, because it was on a plate. They thought that was rational. I still can't believe their nerve. 
They've recovered since then, and our relationship is way better now. As an adult, I tried to cut them some slack. Parenting is hard already, and when you're a struggling addict, it is even more so. But as a teen, I hated them. Not only for the addiction, but also for insulting my intelligence like they did. Still something I think about that I need to let go. Number 9. Not a parent. I couldn't sleep one night. For some reason, I was wandering around the apartment. I saw the balcony doors were open, and my mom was sitting on the railing of the half-balcony ledge with her legs dangling out, probably thinking about jumping. She could have easily just scooted forward a couple of inches and gone over the side seventh floor. I started sobbing and begging her to come in. She did eventually calling me an idiot. Stupid. Ruining everything. She's an alcoholic, so I saw a lot over the years before I moved out at 19, but that one stays with me. Number 10 got caught by my six-year-old getting it on. My boyfriend was on top. Luckily, we heard some noise outside the door and pulled the blanket on us. He asked why my boyfriend was on me, and I told him I was really cold. When he was seven, he tried coming in when my boyfriend was going down on me. We thought he went back downstairs. We would put on a movie or show for him and go upstairs to do stuff, but he didn't. I walk out of the room, and he was there, sitting at the top of the stairs, and asked, Why was I panting so much? Folding laundry is just so much work. Number 11. This isn't a parent story, but when I was about 14 years old, I used to wake up early every morning to go visit my grandparents who lived right next to me. It was about 7 a.m. and I went into their house. I didn't hear them talking, nor were they making food. So I was concerned. I opened their bedroom door and I was scared. Caught them having sex. Missionary on the floor. My grandpa didn't bat an eye but I made eye contact with my grandma for half a second before I shut the door and ran back to my house next door. I laid in disbelief and felt as if I could never see them face to face again. Thankfully, my grandpa and I talked normally later that day. So that was good. Number 12, not a parent, but the child. I have many, many, many stories about this. I walked into my mother having sex with her now husband when I was 13. When I was five or six, my two siblings, toddlers, were crying and I went upstairs to get my mother and my then stepdad. Waited well over an hour and a half only for my stepdad at the time to open the door in his underwear and my mother seemingly naked in bed under the covers. Just thought they were sleeping. Though I was confused because I had knocked about every five to ten minutes during the first hour before giving up. Nine months later. My baby sister was born. Number 13. My wife had a flat in the middle of a driving rainstorm. I went out and rescued her, but in the course of changing the tire, I was soaked through all the way to my skin like a swimming pool. We get home. I'm in pain, wet cold. Our teenager is in the kitchen cooking, which is next to the laundry room. I go to the laundry room dripping wet and tell him in the next 40 to 60 seconds I will be completely naked if you want to continue standing there, that's on you. But, but, takes off shirt in the next 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, okay, I'm going. I'm going. Number 14. My daughter was real young, still like two, almost three, I think. It was real late at night. The lady and I were getting it on. Our house back then was quite small and had no doors inside the house. I guess our daughter woke up and stood in our doorway for a few moments before we noticed. The funny part was with the low lighting and her glaring at us through the hair in her face. She looked like something from a horror movie. Either that or the time we went camping with some friends and I threw up after eating some magic mushrooms. My son was standing there looking at me, and when I looked up at him, he looked all sorts of trippy. I usually don't do drugs around them, so it felt really weird for me, even though it wasn't a very big dose. Number 15. My seven-year-old has a habit of coming out of his room because he's scared. He's done this since he'd learned to walk, and he's not scared. He's just afraid he's going to miss something exciting. Now that you know that, I can tell you about the time my husband had taken some weed, legal here, and he rarely does it. And being the nice wife I am, I prepared him some fresh baked cookies, pizza rolls, nachos, and wings, basically a munchies buffet on the table after the kids had gone to bed. My kid comes out like he usually does, announces that he's once again scared, and proceeds to have one pair of eyeballs that goes to the size of dinner plates because damned if there wasn't an amazing spread just sitting in front of his parents on the coffee table. That was months ago when the little butthead still thinks that's what we do after they go to bed every day. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for part two.